and Dan, welcome to Planet Slow-Mo. You may have noticed that A, we're dressed like firefighters, and B, the room is on fire. If you hadn't noticed, I'd be slightly surprised and worried. We're trying to film something that is quite rare, but incredibly dangerous to a firefighter, and it's called the backdrop. Before we do, it's quite cold outside, so I'm going to warm myself up a little bit. I think I'm warming up, actually. All right, okay. Let's outside. Right, pretty hot. <laughs> This is our experiment area. Dan, why don't you run us through this ship and container setup? Okay, so the fire's going to be all inside. Important things to note on the outside, though, are these doors here, which can be closed and opened. Moving along, also there's a window, one on each side, that can be closed and opened as well. And we've got this uh, Dutch door, Dutch oven. What, Dutch? Not Dutch oven. Just Dutch door. Just, it's a door, yeah. Dutch door situation. I'll go into that in a, in a minute. Let's go inside. Inside, you'll see our extremely nice but extremely flammable room. Wood all over the walls as fuel, very flammable couch, dead Christmas tree, they go up like an absolute. A backdraft is caused when there's a fire in a contained area. Eventually, the fire will deplete all the oxygen in the room and it dies down, but it's still sort of burning the fuel as embers. And then what can happen is a window might break or a door flies open, causing a sudden rush of oxygen into the room, which then causes a very deadly explosion. Firefighters typically do everything they can to avoid a backdraft, and we're here today deliberately causing one. <laughs> yeah. So the way we're going to manage that is, we've mentioned this fuel at the back, the Christmas tree and the wood. We're going to light that, and when that's nicely cooking, we're going to shut the back doors up, and then the fire's going to start to move through the, through the room, onto the sofa, onto the couch, Aww. you know, all that. And it's going to move through, and then we'll have some flames coming out the windows just here going to move further through the room. We're going to close the windows up, and then the only thing that's going to be open is this front door. So we've got our fire. It's nice and hot, about 1,000 degrees. It's come through the room, and all that's going to be open is this bottom door here, allowing that oxygen in, getting the fire nice and thoroughly cooking the room. Then we're going to close this and start to deplete it of oxygen. At that point, we'll then open this top door, and then within sort of 30 seconds of smoke pouring out and oxygen pouring in, it's going to create our backdraft explosion. <laughs> To measure how far the backdraft goes, we have these markers placed every five feet all the way to the end, and Dan has garnished them with a marshmallow. Yep. Make some s'mores when we're done, maybe. Why not? Over there, we have the Phantom Flex 4K running at 1,000 frames a second, and inside, we have a GoPro, which is in what I'm told is a fireproof housing, but... Well, we'll see. We'll see. All right, I think now it's time we hand over to the fire department and we'll get this thing cooking. All right. All right. <laughs> What we're looking for now is we want fire coming out of these windows, and then we'll start getting fire out of the door as well. We got it now. Awesome. All right, we got fire out of this window over here. All right, close the windows. Close the front. All right, door's closing. Just the Dutch oven open. So we're currently starving the room. Yeah, all the, all the hatches and Dutch doors are shut. The fire should be coming down, but still slowly burning through fuel. Yeah, so the, uh, the next step is to open up that top door and let the oxygen back in again. All right, they're about to open the door. Draft initiated. I wonder if there's like much indication about when it's about to start. Can you tell from like the pattern of the smoke when it's about to go? I don't know. Or is it just suddenly just poof? Based on what I've read, it's usually quite sudden. Like, and it's so quiet and there's no visible flame that it doesn't actually seem that dangerous. No. But damn, would you not want to be stood in front of that? I would not. Yeah, you would just you would just have no idea of the danger you're in if you were just stood in front of that. You can hear the noise inside. Yeah, some temperature clunks. Sofa's burning nicely. Should be getting quite close now. Oh, come on. <laughs> Why was it? Oh. Whoa! Oh. God. Good Lord. He almost went in front of it. He did. All right, let's get a look at that. 
because he was walking in, I let go of the pan handle. I was like, well, oh, it's not going to happen anytime soon. And I quickly had to re grab it. <laughs> Bosh. <laughs> oh my god, there's a base, like your head's right in front of it. I've seen he's wearing a mask for this. It gets some absolute distance on that. It goes at least 40 feet. Just brushed it off like it was nothing. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna go for it again, straight up. Oh, it's really burning again. It takes a while to get going, doesn't it? Yeah. It takes a while to reignite. To reach that critical condition. <laughs> if a plane flies through smoke, does it drop? Uh, if the density of the air... Whoa! Oh, God. That was intense. Look at the... Fl oh ferocity of this. That was a real one. So there was very little indication. No, there wasn't at all. Oh, look, look at that, that front. It looks amazing. That is mental. Oh, it's like a sphere that just keeps growing out of itself. It looks like there's something solid pushing it out. <laughs> Pretty much just all smoke and fire. That is insanity. Look at that. Goodness me. What an absolute... I like how it grows from, like, a perfectly central point. A little bit of flame. Oh. It's like a dragon. <laughs> I can imagine, like, a shuttle on the other end of it. Yeah, like, it's Except like... there's just nothing there. Oh, that's terrifying. That was the beefiest one yet. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the effect we were after. These ones have felt the heat a little, a little yeah. bit of stainage, small bit of char. Oh, that one, look at that. That one's that one's pretty. Oh, pretty much this good might to be go. perfect actually. <laughs> the couch and the chair gone. The tree gone. Disintegrated. Oh, look at this marshmallow. It looks good. It looks actually good. Probably wouldn't it eat it. It fell off, but it looks decent. Let's have a look around the side. Whoa. It's kind of a chilly day. This is nice. Oh, you really feel the heat oh, as you come past really this up. window. <laughs> that is really up. <sighs> I bet you could fry an egg on that. It's funny you say that. I've actually. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. Let's, let's have a go. Got uh, some eggs. Let's have a couple. Yeah, large ones too. Are you sort of a uh, sunny side up sort of yeah. bloke? Yeah. All right, let's see. I think it'll be hotter over the back here. Yeah, let's try it. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's immediately cooked. It's sizzling. It's burnt, if anything. <laughs> it's just instantly cooked. OK, Dan, so on the show so far, we've almost dropped a phantom into a hole in the earth from a drone. When we splashed it full of water. Yeah, almost blew one away in a wind tunnel. Why not yeah. put one in front of a giant fireball? Makes yeah. sense. It's in a fireproof case. Um, but once again, you know, it's only fireproof until it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it won't get too hot. And we've got all the cables coming out the back under these blankets. So hopefully the trigger cable won't melt before I've pressed the trigger. So you don't fancy standing behind the camera? No. OK, yeah. I want to keep the old eyebrows on. Yeah. All right, let's get a gnarly shot, shall we? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Looks evil coming out the sides there. It does. That's how you get a fire going. Look at it. It's just a box I don't fire. think I've ever seen through fire into other fire through more fire. It's like no. there wasn't anything on fire. There was just a room full of fire. All right, let's hope for an absolute howler. <laughs> Decidedly more nervous standing here than I was over there. Oh. Yeah, it is pretty, it's pretty sketchy, isn't it? Yeah. And these are some serious eyebrows to lose as well. That's like yeah. a whole feature of my face gone. Well, at least you've got two to three people's worth of eyebrows. It's so true. They also you lose... connect in the middle, so if maybe <laughs> that bit burns off, it'd be all right. <laughs> it's cool. You can tell it's sort of about to happen because it starts to roll out at the front. This is nerve-wracking. We're on. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa. <coughs> All right, let's get a look at that. A lot more ominous from this angle. A lot more scary. Well, because it's going to come towards us. <laughs> Instinctively, I want to duck. Oh, look at the ball of it. 
It's like a sideways geyser in terms of what it looks like in slow-mo. Oh, a little flame under there. See it? Yeah, it looked so nice and soft until <laughs> that big flame came out. It looks like you could lie down in that before it would cook off your eyebrows. Well, that's given me an idea for part two. What? Well, that was some pretty terrifying footage of a pretty terrifying event that can happen to a firefighter. Because it's so lethal and dangerous, it was actually really hard to find anywhere we could do this. Yeah, there's not a lot of backdraft training facilities about. I suppose they try and avoid it rather than create it. Yeah, it makes sense. For that reason, I want to say a big thanks to Travis County Fire Rescue who managed to square this away for us. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Make sure you subscribe to the Slow Mo Guys and make sure you check out part two when we'll create a tiny little backdraft of our own. We should probably get out of this building just in case they decide to do some training in it. You, you know what they're like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>